uh, instructions to my students earlier this evening, I realized that this is my fifth year running this show at UW Sheboygan. <laughs> Which means it's going to be the best show ever, despite the rain. Now, there are going to be some announcements, but we're going to start the show off hopefully impressively, right now. So first, I'm going to call up my organic students. So we have, we have Eric, Chen Yu, Kyle, Lisa, <laughs> Jar, and Alexandra. I'm not actually sure what order they're going to be doing this first, but uh, okay, so we're going to start off with something that sort of worked. Can I keep the, the, the lights up, the stage lights up, just for a moment? So this is a saturated solution of sodium acetate. It's a salt very similar to sodium chloride, the what you put on your food. And if you pour it out, no, okay. See, we're, we're not starting off on the right foot here. We're starting off with something that unfortunately happens with chemistry. Things don't always work. So as far as the best show ever, I'm not off to a good start. <laughs> but we're going to change it up. OK, so can I have the stage lights down, please? You guys ready? So first, we're going to be using lycopodium powder. Lycopodium is a moss. If you dry that moss, you get a very fine powder that looks like off-white flour. And if you've ever seen flour and flame mixed together, you know what can happen. And if you blow it through a piece of Tigon tubing, you can make a little flamethrower. Doing it once, well, 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 we'll work on that in a minute. So we're going to try the bubbles next? OK. So we're going to get back to that in a moment. So many of you probably have natural gas helping to heat your house and to heat your water. It's very flammable. And if you bubble it through soapy water, ready? If you lift up some of these bubbles, I know we're being very mysterious here. The jar has some of these bubbles in her hand. Now, natural gas, one of the reasons why we can use it in our houses is it burns very cleanly and it burns very quickly. But, so I gave these students an exam today and they're kind of mad. So they, they promised that they wanted to set me on fire. So I think I should let them do that, don't you think? Can I have the lights back up, please? So this is what you can do when you're in a lab on a Thursday afternoon and you're searching for something that can be a lot of fun to do and to begin a cool chemistry show. And uh, when your instructor gets involved, he, I end up you know, setting my hands on fire. But I tell you, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm Dr. James Cabral. 
I'm one of the chemistry instructors on this campus. The second chemistry instructor is Dr. Carrie Rukamp. She was helping in taking the tickets and getting everything else organized. So please give a round to Carrie and her students who have also been helping. You'll see them around. I would not be able to do this without her. I want to remind you before we even begin that after the show, directly after the show, if you proceed out, if you, if you go to exiting uh, the theater, if you go to your left and follow the signs, all the way up to the second floor of the science building, our beautiful science building, everyone will, able, will be able to make slime. I think, well, flubber, actually. Um, and you'll be able to take it home. So you will be able to take something home with you. Also, when coming in, um, something new this year, I made a little printout of a couple of experiments that you could do at home. And as I said in bold letters on that handout, make sure that an adult is always present. Um, so there were three experiments. One was homemade lava lamps. Uh, one was dry ice bubbles, which you will see tonight. And the third one was cornstarch and water to make a non-Newtonian fluid. You will also see that tonight. All of them can be done very inexpensively. Uh, and as long as you have one of these plastic drop cloths around, you can clean up quick. Um, so I'm a big fan of plastic drop cloths. You know, whenever you're doing something like this, you can see they're around. So tonight, you're going to see a lot of color, a lot of flashing, and my general chemistry students doing all variety of things. Remember, science always has to be safe. So whenever you see my students up here, they will have their goggles on. We will, from time to time during the show, have assistance. Now, we are going to call you up if you have a pink or blue, I forget the colors, pink or blue tickets, which are coming down to me. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. <laughs> oh, they're all blue. OK, they're all blue. Okay. So, when it comes time to have assistance, I will ask you to get your tickets out. Big raffle. Uh, and I will pick, uh, depending on what the nature of the experiment is, an older assistant or a younger assistant. If your ticket is called, please make your way to where the projector is. We will have a set of goggles for you. We will have some gloves for you because we want you to be as safe as possible. Please, if you come up on stage, follow either my instructions or my students' instructions. We want you to be very safe. Um, some of the experiments we'll have you come up with are a bit flashy if you get my meaning. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Rain and Jess to come up front. And you'll notice that we have uh, a set of balloons up here first. So we're going to start off with Jess. Um, and <laughs> Rain is very direct with the, uh, the fire. So, what we're going to start with is a balloon that contains just oxygen. So oxygen, you breathe it in. It's what keeps us, one of the things that keeps us alive. Now, oxygen, oxygen is required to burn things, but oxygen itself is not very flammable. But we have something else that is a little bit flammable. So what I suggest is for you to put your fingers in your ears. What's that? Oh, can we have the lights down, please? OK, so. The gas in that particular balloon was just hydrogen. Hydrogen is lighter than air. That's why it was floating up. It's very similar to helium uh, in its size. Helium is not flammable, but hydrogen is. Now, what happens if you combine hydrogen and oxygen? Again, fingers in your, fingers in your ears. Uh, I think we're going to skip.
it still burns, but there's more energy created when you combine hydrogen and oxygen. If you combine hydrogen and oxygen, <laughs> they can see it already. If you combine hydrogen and oxygen, you make water. Water is the byproduct. We're getting a lot of water coming down out of the sky today, unfortunately. Now, that was a smaller version. This is the bigger version. Now, moving target. So you really want to have your fingers in your ears for this one. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you said you could hit a moving target. <laughs> Go. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to turn that off. I wanted to give Rain a challenge. <laughs> we didn't include enough hydrogen. That's my fault. Oh. So this is thicker latex than the other balloons. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of effort, but that, little, that effort that you get to put into it is really worth the weight. <laughs> and, and the nerves, if you're a professor. Thank you, Rain and Jess. Big hit, Rain and So I have to tell, can I have the lights up, please? So I have to tell you a story. When Rain and Jess were getting this together, Rain said to me, so how big can we go? <laughs> and what did I do? I did this. I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> was it really that bad? No, it wasn't as bad as I expected. Are you all right? All right? <laughs> um, Rain is what we call hardcore. So next we're going to have uh, Keen and Trevor come up. We're going to do a little change of pace. They're going to be doing the magic bottle. So while they get set up, we need our first volunteers. So this is going to be two younger volunteers. So I'm going to take the younger volunteers. So make sure you have your tickets out. So I'm going to pick two at random. I'm going to move these around. So make sure that if you are picked, please come down front to where Trevor and Keen are standing and we'll make sure we get you gloved and goggled. Okay. 703755. Come on down. You're the next contestant on Cool Chemistry. All right. Our other assistant is 703373. Don't worry, we'll have more opportunities for assistance. So 
So this is the magic bottle experiment. You'll notice that what Keen and Trevor are doing right now are filling a variety of beakers with clear liquids. And they're going to do six of these. So if you've ever done red cabbage indicator, how many people have done red cabbage indicator? Maybe I should have included that one on that list of cool experiments. So if you take red cabbage and you put it in a food processor with a little bit of warm water, you get cabbage juice. Everyone wants to drink cabbage juice, right? <laughs> I wouldn't either, I promise you that. But what happens is if you take that red cabbage juice and you add a few drops of a variety of household liquids, if you add in vinegar, if you add in bleach, uh, if you add in salt solution, you're going to get different colors. So depending on what you add, it could turn blue, it could turn green, it could turn red. Now, we don't have red cabbage indicator, but we do have, what do we have? Trevor and Keen, what do we have? <laughs> See, Keen is a little bit of a showman, so I'm surprised he didn't have a, a little remark for me right there. <laughs> his grade is not at stake. Please don't believe anything he says. Keen was just in Godspell recently. Uh, so if you had attended the, uh, uh, the performances of Godspell in this very theater. So, what you can do if you have the right magic solutions is that you can change them color. So our assistants are going to be assisting with this. Now with any experiment, not every experiment, but some experiments take multiple steps. So what are we adding here? I'm trying to look at the label, I can't see it from here. You can have them move around front if it's easier to... So what are in these solutions are called indicators, and red cabbage is an indicator. It indicates whether or not you have an acid or a base present. Vinegar is acidic, bleach is basic. If you've ever tasted anything that had vinegar in it, it's a very sour taste. Acids taste very sour. If you've ever had lime juice, lime juice contains a little bit of base and it's kind of bitter. And some experiments take a little longer than others. Don't worry, folks. We'll get there in the end. I can always start cracking jokes. <laughs> if you ask my students, they'll tell you they, don't want you, they, don't, they don't want me to do that. Because I'm not very funny. <laughs> See? They're, they're laughing because, and clapping because I'm not actually funny. Okay, so, so our, our, our assistants are stirring right now, and once they're done stirring, ah, there we go. If we could have them, if we could have the assistants move aside whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> So I highly suggest the uh, red cabbage indicator. So I can see from here and we'll get, okay. Do we get there? Okay, so the clear solutions that were originally added You'll notice that all these solutions are now colored. So one of the things that was added, what was added? NaOH. NaOH, sodium hydroxide, which is uh, another name for sodium hydroxide is soda ash. It's basic. And the indicators, if you look down the row, when you add sodium hydroxide, they all turn a different color when you add in that base. Now, can 
since this is the magic bottle experiment, does the magic bottle, can it make it disappear? Okay. okay. You think so? Okay. See, this is, this is the kind of thing that happens in class, just sort of back and forth. These are the funny guys. I'm not, you know, as I've shown already, I'm not funny. Yeah, go ahead. I think I'm going to go assist. So once you have something that's basic, if you add acid back in, so if you had bleach and you added vinegar, you could make that color go away. So if you ever do red cabbage indicator, you add in bleach, it will turn blue. If you add in vinegar, it will go back to purple. So something you could try out at home. So thank you very much for our assistance. So, next on the list is Lauren and Sarah. They're going to do colored flames. So we're going to let them get set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get set up, and they're going to show you first, and then we're going to have two volunteers to come try it. So I think we'll get those volunteers now. So this is going to be the older subset, our older assistants. So I'm going to mix these up. Seven zero three three seven five. And seven zero three three seven nine. So make sure those assistants that come up, make sure you get goggles and gloves. So as you'll notice, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of go back and forth between fire and something else, and fire and something else. It doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, it's not great to have all the fire all at once. Where's the fun in that, right? I feel like I need to make a public service announcement. Never play with matches. Please. What I suggest is when you get to the college level, come here and you could do all this cool stuff. Okay, so if our assistants can come ahead and please step back behind Lauren and Sarah first. Can I have the, house, uh, the stage lights mostly down? Not completely, but mostly down. So. Notice the color. So, the propane in the tank is burning blue, but if we add our specific solution, our other magic solution, we can change the color of that flame. So that was a copper salt. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that was green. Which one's next? Potassium. potassium chloride. So this is potassium. So that was, I think, supposed to be white. It's supposed to be pinkish, purple. pinkish, purple, white, some combination thereof. And the next one is? 
Sodium chloride. So this is table salt. So very, very bright orange. Okay, so now we're going to have our assistants come up. Please make sure you're spraying towards the slate tiles there. So spray down and away. Red, and if, I, if I'm correct, red is strontium. Strontium chloride. And the only one I know that's left is boron, which is borax. So if you dissolve borax. So, how many people love fireworks? I should ask, how many people don't love fireworks, right? So, so if you ever get to talk to a, a person who makes fireworks, they're most likely a chemist. So the salts that you see here, we dissolve them in a little bit of water and a little bit of alcohol. And when they burn, Specific chemical reaction occurs where you actually uh, make a little bit of different color. So whenever you see the colors of fireworks, they're different salts. So we have those same salts here, but of course in fireworks it's all a solid material that propelled hundreds of feet up in the air and it's really awesome on 4th of July. Now unfortunately, we don't have the means to make fireworks here. It'd be cool if we did. But the same kind of chemistry occurs right here. So that was our magic spray bottle. So give a hand to our assistants and to Lauren and Sarah. Next we have Amira and Sierra. And this is going to be elephant's toothpaste. This is one of my favorites. There's nothing like having to involve a kiddie pool. Uh, if, you, if you were able to see down from the top row, you could probably tell that we've used it quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, and I don't, we've used it recently and haven't washed it completely out. So we're going to need one older assistant for this. Let me mix this up again. 703752. Please come on down. Goggles and gloves, please. Now, in most medicine cabinets, most likely people have hydrogen peroxide. So if you ever get a cut, Unfortunately, you may have to use hydrogen peroxide, which can sting from time to time. But you'll notice that it tends to bubble a little bit when you get on your skin. Hydrogen peroxide is a very similar structure to water, chemically. If you look at the structure of water, it's two hydrogens and one oxygen. So what Ray and Jess were making earlier when they were doing their balloon experiment, they were making water, which is falling down on us, as I said. Peroxide contains an extra oxygen, and that extra oxygen allows um, a release of energy, and that peroxide, that's okay, I think that's enough. Um, <laughs> that extra oxygen helps kill the bacteria that you get on your skin so you don't get an infected cut. Now, you can release that oxygen a lot faster if you have the right catalyst. And our catalyst today is potassium iodide, but it's not fun enough if you just release that and, and you get a little bit of you know, the oxygen coming out, it helps if you have a little bit of soap along with it. So what we're mixing in that two liter bottle, okay, I, I was giving a look, I thought I was doing something wrong. Okay, um, if you mix all of those within a two liter bottle, we'll see what kind, we, what kind of height we can get on this. So we've done this previously. Anyone who has been to this show before 
And it's probably seen this done in a graduated cylinder, so a log glass tube, and it sort of flows out, and it really does look like toothpaste. Keep in mind that a two-liter soda bottle has a much thinner exit, and if you have a much thinner exit, things escape a little bit quicker and faster. Um, okay, um, we're going to have to redo this one a little bit later. Um, we need more potassium iodide. Well, we'll come back to this one. So what I would like instead is to have the three amigos come up. So we're going to do something a little bit similar. We're going to do Diet Coke and Mentos. Okay, you guys gonna do this all at once? Okay, so wait for my signal. My, my signal. One, two, okay, ready? One, two, three. So, I knew they'd love this one. Okay, so, this works best. You can try this at home. Again, I would suggest doing this outside, in a kiddie pool or on the grass. So, make sure that what you get is diet soda, not the regular. Regular will work, but it won't get that kind of height. I mean, that was a good about six feet, I think, in that one of them. So. Unfortunately, the sugar that is regular soda changes the density and changes the makeup of the solution of soda that you do get a little bubbling, but it doesn't get that distance. Without the sugar, you really release all of the carbon dioxide gas all at once. So again, I suggest trying this at home, but make sure you do it outside, not in the kitchen. Um, I know that there, there are a lot of experiments that you think the kitchen is the best spot to do it, I suggest outside or in the garage because kitchens have nice counters and a lot of these things do it outside. Okay, so what do we have next? So we have Taryn and Kevin. This is sort of a two-part experiment. So we're going to set this up first. Uh, it's a little longer experiment, so we're going to set it up and then we're going to come back to it later, just like we're going to come back to the elephant's toothpaste later. Um, put it on that one. So what we're going to use here is something you can also buy. It's a battery. Batteries can generate energy. So what we're going to do is use the battery, the large battery that we have, to do a chemical reaction. Now this one is going to take a little bit of time. So what we're doing is showing you the setup first. So what they're making is a complete circuit. To complete the circuit requires a solution of a salt, and the salt, that bright blue salt, is copper sulfate. What's attached to the alligator clips are pieces of copper metal. Now, what are we going to do with that? We're going to turn that blue solution into copper metal. But we need something to deposit it on, and it's going to be that piece of silverware. So you'll notice, hold up, that's all right. Piece of silverware, it's silver looking right now. But I can tell you that after about 20 minutes, it's not going to look silver anymore. So go ahead and start. So that circuit is now complete. If you have a solution of a salt, many salts, it will conduct electricity. So if you 
connect this appropriately to, say, a light, it would generate light. But we're going to use it for chemistry instead. So we're setting this up right now. We may need to check on it. Okay. If you need to come up and adjust it, go ahead and do so. So we're going to come back to this one. So this is something a little bit different than we've shown previously. And we're just going to let that react. And we'll see what happens with that solution when we come back a little bit later. So we'll do a round of applause for them after we show you the end. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> So next we have Brian and Haley. And, and Brian's awesome just for the fact that he's wearing a bow tie. Well, I should say Haley's awesome because she's got a genius shirt. Genius is in the elements, so it might, might be hard to see, but I want one of those shirts. So we're going to do, the, uh, these two are going to do genie in a bottle. So if you've ever seen, oh, if you go back, I Dream of Genie, uh, I, I think it might be on the, uh, the channel MeTV. But if you've ever seen a genie, okay, maybe I should say Aladdin. How many of these people have seen the movie Aladdin, Disney? One of the best ever. When you rub that lamp, the genie comes out. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a real genie or Robin Williams. See, these are the kind of jokes that I tell in class, and I get that kind of reaction. <laughs> so, go ahead and start with one. Or are you going to do all of them at once? Oh, you're going to do them all at once. So normally when you rub a genie's lamp, the genie comes out. In this case... We're doing it via a chemical reaction, so there was a little bit of a bag of a powder material, manganese dioxide. You drop it down into peroxide, and much like the elephant's toothpaste experiment, you're releasing the oxygen gas. So in this case, we're just releasing the oxygen gas, and it generates a little smoke. And you can see that sometimes when you run three different experiments, one works better than the other. So that red one is really going. And that's very patriotic, by the way, red, white, and blue. Can I keep those? Okay. Again, I love the bow tie. I need to get a bow tie. It's quite warm. Is that smoke toxic? Water. <laughs> it's water vapor. Are you worried, Ray? I don't know, I'm taking in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let it go. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah now it's over here by us. <laughs> comedians. I'm surrounded by comedians. That's okay. At least it's more funny, right? Okay, next we're going to have hydrophobic sand. So this is going to be Travis and Graham, so we're going to need to turn on a projector for this. <laughs> so yes, we're including much more technology this year. So it's going to take a little bit to warm up. So, this is another one that you can do at home as we watch the uh, genie still coming out of the bottle. And Panasonic. So, what we have is craft sand. So, this is sand that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. Ooh. Close up. So I believe we what we have here is an ordinary beaker of ordinary water. Is that correct? Okay, very correct. And you're going to pour in just some of this red craft sand and see what happens.
So the sand, unreactive with water, just like if you were at the beach and you picked up some sand and dropped it into the water, it's more dense than water, so it will sink to the bottom. So is this the moon sand that you're adding in? Okay, so what Travis and Graham have done, they have sprayed some of this craft sand with Scotchgard, which is a protectant. It's a sealant. So you'll notice that it's falling down. I haven't seen this before, so... So Travis, maybe you can, you can explain a little bit more, project. Yeah, good, good. All right, um, we baked the sand at like 200 degrees for an hour to get all the moisture out of it. And then once all the moisture is out of it, we can spray it with the Scotchgard spray. And it absorbs the spray much like it would in normal water, except for the Scotchgard spray is waterproof. So when you put it in the water, it actually doesn't absorb any water. And the kind of silvery covering you see on it is actually air that's trapped in the sand because the water can't get into it. And that is what happens when you spray the sand with Scotchgard. And we have one other little small thing to show you. This was, a, this was a new one for me this year, so I'm glad these guys come up, came up with it. So again, um, so there are a couple of things, uh, the ones that we've described that you can do at home um, that I didn't include on that little sheet I handed out. I did include my email address, um, and I'm more than happy to share some of these experiments. Um, the students have provided me all the instructions, so I will be able to send those to you. The other thing that you can do is that all you have to do, greatest thing in the world, is doing a Google search. Just search for moon sand, and you should be able to find instru uh, instructions to do so. So now we have some of the sand between two watch glasses. Okay, so they, okay, so one watch glass, and we've got some of the sand on top of it, and now they're putting a little bit of water on top. So normally, if you were to add water on top of sand, it would start to permeate right through. So in the, the sand that they've made, it prevents that water from going down, and so it's sort of collecting in the middle. So Scotchgard, which is something you could buy at Walmart or Target or Kmart, any of those stores, and craft sand. You can use regular sand if you wish. Craft sand is colored, and so anything that's colored is more fun. That's pretty cool. So all of that water. Okay, mop that up. Get the water away from the technology. There are the towels underneath on that shelf there. I really, I really like that one. That one's might be a little bit messy, but again, plastic drop cloths. Okay, so next we have Liz and Tanner doing an oscillating reaction. Thankfully, we're going to keep that projector back up. Now we're going to do what's called an oscillating chemical reaction. And what they're placing on the projector is what we call a stir plate. So it's magnetically stirred. And what they're going to do is mix a sequence of clear chemicals. There we go. Now, just like the magic bottle experiment, can we make a little bit of color from these clear solutions? And you can probably guess that, yes, we can do that. So this is solution A, or is it solution C? 
I forget the order. They told me the order earlier. Potassium iodide. Potassium iodide. So a lot of these chemicals are very versatile. They're used in a lot of different chemical reactions. So that was potassium iodide. This is manganese. And this is the peroxide. Peroxide is also. So we've got one color. So the combination of those three, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> so watch. So if you guys can move, move back just a little bit, you'll notice that this changes color from amber to blue, back to amber. And we're not doing anything. It's like magic. So I feel like it could do this. So this is why it's called an oscillating reaction, because it goes back and forth. I have to tell you, they've done this, what, four times now? Yeah. This is the first time it worked. Okay. So now they're going to add in a fourth chemical, sodium thiosulfate, and it should stop the reaction. Now, let's see if it goes back. <laughs> I think this actually worked properly this time, completely. There's magic on this stage. Seriously, there's magic on this stage. All right. So that is called the briggs rauscher oscillating reaction. So in the course of that reaction, you take potassium iodide and you make iodine. So I don't think they do this much anymore, but instead of peroxide... Nurses used to put iodine on your skin to kill infections, and it's a very purple crystal. So what you're doing in the course of this reaction is making some of that purple crystal, and that was the bluish color that you saw in the oscillating reaction. And in the course of the reaction, that iodine gets used up, and you turn back to amber, and it goes back and forth. So theoretically, that could run for 10 or 15 minutes, I believe, and just keep going back and forth. So thank goodness, cool chemistry. Sometimes things really do work. So, we're going to come back to elephant's toothpaste. So we're going to pick a, another helper. You all right? Oh, you mean, okay. 703609. Just put it beside. <laughs> okay, so once again, we're using potassium iodide, the same salt that was used in the previous experiment. So again, versatile chemicals. So we still have our mixture of soap, food coloring, and hydrogen peroxide. And we're putting that potassium iodide right in. So when we tried this one a week ago, we didn't get that much height. Uh, and there's still a little bit of soap stuck up there. What's that? So you'll notice it's still going. 
And it probably will still be going, much like, oh, it looks like our genie in the bottles have finally stopped. So it does take a while. Thank you. And thank you to our helper. So we're just going to let that go. I don't think we need the kiddie pool for a while. So the, the next group we have up are New and Michael. We're about halfway through, and they're going to be doing handheld fire. I haven't seen this one yet. No. Okay, so this is one that I would not suggest trying at home. So what Michael and New have made are little balls of cotton. So it's cotton strips wound in cotton string. 100% cotton, I made sure to get 100% cotton. So, ball of cotton. And what they're putting on is lighter fluid. Now, lighter fluid also burns very quickly. You can, you can wipe off, there's the, the bucket of water here. So it burns fast enough, as long as you move it around. You don't have to juggle it. I juggle from time to time, so I'm getting calls from, from the people behind me that I should start juggling these, but uh, I don't think we have enough of them to juggle. Okay. Okay. One of the things you can always tell if it's an active lab where things are being burned, you always get that slightly burned smell. So if you come up to the stage, you get that slightly burned smell. It looks like our elephant's toothpaste has finally died out, um, but that was awesome. I always love that one. Uh, I will tell you a little bit of a story. My wife, who is in the audience, she's the chemistry, one of the chemistry professors at uw Manitowoc. They have their own cool chemistry show coming up on May 8th. May 8th. Um, if you've ever been up to Manitowoc's theater, they have a, a theater where the stage is raised up above. And they did that very same experiment. If you look at the panels up above the stage in Manitowoc, there's a little bit of a stain there. <laughs> that stain is from elephant's toothpaste. So that's where I got the idea to do it in a two liter Coke bottle. So I think we're definitely going to do it that way from now on. So next we have Yang and Mai Mua, and they're going to be doing bubbles. And again, we're going to need volunteers. So while they get set up, I'm going to do one from each group. Seven zero three three five one. And seven zero three three six two. Can I have someone help with the gloves and goggles? Please? Okay, so. How many have had those little bottles of bubble solution that you get the little thing that you blow through and you make these little bubbles that go up? I always loved those when I was a kid. Well, you could do this on a much larger scale, and that's what we're going to do now. Maybe I'll turn that. So come on around. Higher.
<laughs> so this is a bubble solution of regular dish soap, water, and corn syrup. And what we have here are two dowels, but you can also use yardsticks. And we have a little piece of string connected there, and the weight is just a washer. And all you have to do is pull them apart. Now, this doesn't always work perfectly. When we did this, when we practiced this, it was a windy day last week. If you want to lift it up and maybe point it more directly. This doesn't always work perfectly. Now you can actually buy ooh, bubble solution that is pre-made, but it's kind of expensive. This is the really easy way to do it. Again, on a summer day. Ooh. It does take moving, moving, the, moving the dowels out very slowly. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the greatest wind in here with this little fan, but uh, this is something you can definitely do at home. <laughs> Let's try it one more. Oh, one more. Try one more. Oh. All right. Okay, so what we have first is called onion skin paper. It's a very, very thin paper. Keen is going to be collecting what, what finishes up once we burn it. So this is going to burn pretty quickly. It's so thin that even the, the, the smallest breath of wind can knock it over. Unfortunately, I'm sort of blocked from view right now. I can't see what's going on. Okay, you're good? Okay. Yes, I did set him up. <laughs> so it burns until there's very nothing left, and you can see that it, it's so light that it just sort of floats away. Now, there's not enough of the embers left to cause a problem. We just wanted to make a little fun of Keen. <laughs> I, I, I should say, he makes fun of me all the time. Okay, so now the second experiment is we're going to light this newspaper on fire, not with any matches, but with a chemical reaction. So they're combining glycerin, potassium permanganate, and a little acid. What's Acetone. Acetone. Acetone is the main component of nail polish remover. It's a, it's a, it's a solvent. I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, so the combination of glycerin, potassium permanganate, and acetone is exothermic, and it will burn down completely, but the newspaper is heavy enough that it's not going to go up in the air like the onion skin paper did, I believe. It should.
And with something like this that, that may be a little bit still burning, we want to make sure we put it out with a little bit of water. Just to be safe. So that's burning paper via a chemical reaction. So we can have one person come up and help? Okay. Yeah, just leave it there for now. You guys can actually move that up, up front there. So, we're going to need one assistant. Actually, you can put it up on the tiles where we were just burning the paper. There should be enough room up there. Yeah, up front. So this is a chemiluminescent reaction. So we need one assistant. Seven zero three six one zero. Okay, we're going to do a chemiluminescent reaction, so if we could have the lights down, please. So if you mix the certain amount of chemicals, again, we're using hydrogen peroxide here, you can get what's called a chemiluminescent reaction. Now, many of you, many of you have done a chemiluminescent reaction before. How many of you have ever used a glow stick? So the chemiluminescent reaction that the three guys up here are doing right now is a very similar reaction. Now unfortunately, its exposure to air makes this chemiluminescent, chemiluminescent reaction burn out pretty quickly, but if you self-contain it in a glow stick, so what they're doing is they're mixing it in a separatory funnel, it's mixing there and they're letting it go slowly down that tube in the collecting dish. So the operative chemical here is called luminol. So I think they're going to do another one here. Oh. So here I have a glow stick, and you can see it's a slightly different reaction. So we can, we can mimic a uh, similar, very similar reaction. Personally, I like the blue better than the green. All right. All right, thank you very much, guys. Lights up, please. I love glow sticks. <coughs> okay, next we have Eric and Jacob, and they're going to do bouncing balls.
So we're going to need two volunteers, I should say two assistants. We have 703-361-361 and 703-356. Please come on down. Can I get help with the... Uh... Now this is another fun thing to do. Um, the two chemicals here that, that were being used are sodium silicate, um, soda glass, which you can buy in various places, and just regular old ethanol or alcohol. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use these two chemicals and make a polymer. So a similar kind of reaction to this is what you're going to do when you make flubber upstairs in the science building later. Not exactly the same polymer, but it's the same kind of reaction, a polymerization reaction. So we're going to start with the sodium silicate solution in one beaker and the alcohol in another beaker and what we need to do is mix. There we have a little bit more room. So as these two chemicals react, they will slowly solidify as the polymerization reaction uh, happens. Now it does take a minute or two to really get going, but what we'll end up having is a white solid that you can pick up and turn into a ball. Eventually when you're stirring this, it'll become very difficult to stir because you're really stirring kind of a jelly. Now when you pick that up, go ahead and squeeze. You can go ahead and if you have gloves on, you can go ahead and take it in your hand and go ahead and squeeze and try to squeeze that into a ball if it comes off the tongs. <laughs> this one's a little bit, oh. <laughs> it's a little bit messy. Now, this particular polymer is a little bit brittle. This is not gonna work as well as the super bouncy ball. I love the super bouncy balls. It won't work as well as that, but there is some elasticity. There we go. Oh, not too uh, easy now. We don't want too many things going into the audience. Go ahead and gather those pieces, if you will. We don't want to be leaving too many pieces around. <laughs> uh, I, I think we could be assured that these beakers, we're not going to get these back. So a simple polymeric reaction. No. <laughs> only, only bounce them on the table. We don't want to be sending things flying. There's still a little bit of alcohol with these. All right. <laughs> As I said, not perfect, but it works. Okay, thank you very much, Eric and Jacob and our assistants.
So, so while Vang and Gabriel are set up, we're going to go back to our electrochemical reaction. So remember the color of that piece of silverware was obviously silver. So we've been running that reaction. So the battery has been supplying the current or the power. You guys can go ahead, yeah, so you can go ahead and fill that and get that heated up. So we're going to get this projector up, and so we'll be able to show you what that piece of silverware looks like. So some of the copper sulfate is in that solution. So that blue salt, through an electrochemical reaction, has turned into copper metal. So copper metal is that nice bronze color or orange color. There we go. So we can show you a big picture of what it looks like. So if we look at our piece of silverware now, it's the same color as that little piece of copper foil that we were using as part of the electrochemical cell. So it's a way of turning anything that you have that's silverware into copper. So this is copper plating. If you've ever had any metal that's plated, my wedding ring is plated with rhodium. It's an electrochemical reaction. So now we've deposited a layer of copper on the top of that uh, piece of silverware. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't make it gold, as someone behind me just suggested. Oh. I was just told by Taryn that if you have the right solution, you can turn it gold. The problem with that is the solution that we would need would be extremely expensive. Aim it in the other direction. They promised they would give this to me as a gift to take home. So now I have a, uh, looks like a copper butter knife. Okay, next with Vang and Gabriel, we have the screaming gummy bear. So, what they are doing right now is heating potassium chlorate. It's a salt, it's another salt. And for this reaction to work, we need to turn that solid into a liquid. Now, these kind of salts melt at very high temperatures. So we're using our propane torch and it does take a few minutes. So what we're going to do, when it's completely melted, we're going to drop in a gummy bear. Now, how many people like, I will say gummy bears, but candy in general? Most people, most people. It releases a lot of energy. Can we have the lights down, please? Hold on one second. All right, go for it. So all of the energy that you get from eating sugar is released by that potassium chloride. So all the sugars get oxidized and it generates a lot of light and heat. That was not as loud as the ones we've done before, but it certainly was light enough. So that's the energy you get when you eat a single gummy bear. Just imagine the energy you get if you ate a handful. Yeah, you won't be able to. It's hot enough that we won't be able to touch that one for a while. And again, just it's another genie in the bottle with releasing some of the smoke. 
Okay, next we have Christina and Emily, and they're going to be doing Invisible Ink, and we are going to need some volunteers for this. Well, you, so you stood up. You could help with the... Okay. So two from the younger jar. I'll mix them up here. We have 703603. And I, and I swear I did this at random. 703602. 603 and 602. Go up to the side, please. We're going to do this with a smaller one, too, since we have two. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some similar solutions to what Keen and Trevor did a little while ago. And our, our assistants are going to be doing a little bit of painting. But you'll see originally when they paint, it's going to be invisible. So it's really like invisible ink. So go ahead and paint whatever you like. So you can make some, some invisible inks that you can make come visible uh, using lemon juice or heat. Uh, and if you do a little searching for some kitchen uh, experiments, you can find some invisible inks. The ones that we have are special to us. Again, these are going to be indicator solutions. Now, once we have our uh, Van Gogh artists uh, complete with their sketches, we're going to be spraying these pieces of uh, paper in order to get the drawings to appear. Okay. One's finished. Both finished. Okay. You'll move to the side, but stay here so you can see your masterpieces. Unfortunately, I can't see from here, but that's okay. Is it not working? Okay. Did it work? Okay. Well, some things don't always work as well, but the idea was the indicators can turn into color once you add the right solution. So that's what their spray bottles have. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got four left. Next is Matt, F, and Garrett with thermite. What we have here is a mixture of aluminum oxide powder, I'm sorry, iron oxide powder, and aluminum metal, in finely powdered form. Now, this reaction is going to make molten iron. So what we have, in order to get the reaction to go, we have a sparkler, just something you could buy for the 4th of July. Now, can we have the lights down, please? Step back. Uh. Okay. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so usually, usually, the, the iron is supposed to drip through and not break the clay pots. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way, but you saw the sparks, you saw the energy from the reaction. And the reason why we do it on the portable lab bench is because we can burn the portable lab bench and it not be a problem. Okay. In fact, if you walk within about two feet of that, you could feel the heat coming off that. Uh, so I think our portable lab bench is sort of out of commission for the time being. Um, okay, that one always makes my heart go a little bit fast. Okay, so next we have Victoria and Chantel, and we have dry ice bubbles. Yes. Now, dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Okay. We need one volunteer, so before I continue with my explanation, we will take one volunteer. Seven zero three six zero one. Okay, so dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. It's called dry because it contains no water. The other thing special about dry ice is that it does not melt. It's sublime, so it goes directly from a solid to a gas. Now, one of the things that's particular to dry ice, it's very, very cold. Um, about minus 78 degrees Celsius, as I recall, uh, or lower. So you want to make sure that you do not handle this with your bare hands. You always want to be wearing gloves or you want to have tongs if you're ever working with this. Now, dry ice, as I described on that little handout, you can buy at places like Praxair. You can buy it at Air Gas. And there are some gas stations that sell it as well. It's used for, for cold storage sometimes. It keeps things very cold. Um, sometimes you can just drop some a little bit of warm water. You can see it bubble. Um, you see sometimes that if you ever see special effects, you can see it right now. What's happening right now is as the dry ice is subliming and making carbon dioxide gas, that carbon dioxide gas is still so cold that it's crystallizing the moisture in the atmosphere, and that's why it looks like flowing out. So if you ever see, sometimes gas machines can, you know, if you're ever doing special effects, just like that. So what we're doing this time is using a little soap solution. And you can make some really cool bubbles with this. Sometimes you just need a little bit more soap, and remember, soap is cheap. Victoria, can you move the, the cooler back a little bit? There we go. I wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> So it's slowly creating the carbon dioxide gas and it's filling that bubble. It's going to just keep growing and growing and growing and fill this room. No, I'm kidding. 
I think our assistant should pop that with his finger. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but see, one of the great things about this particular experiment, you could just get it to go right over again. Try it one more time. It looks like they want one more time. I think they do want it to grow and fill the entire room. I can, I can tell you that if you let it do that, we'd be here all night. <laughs> Someone doesn't want to go to school tomorrow. I think I just heard that. I think there used to be a show called The Things That Kids Say. Uh, I just had one of my students ask me if class was canceled tomorrow. No. No, you cannot poll the audience. You can also not phone a friend. Eventually, the, the elasticity of the bubble will break on its own before it did get to grow and fill this room, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, see, there we go. So unfortunately, the bubble would not grow enough in order to fill the room. Although maybe if we used our soap solution from earlier with the big bubbles, we could get it pretty big, but unfortunately we're running out of time. Okay, so now we have a, so our penultimate demo is Amy and Janet. They're going to be doing non-Newtonian fluid, and they have a special setup. So what I would like to do is get Andrew and Matt R. to prepare the final demo, the final counter. And... This might be the easiest thing to make in the world. You buy a box of cornstarch for about 88 cents. You get some warm tap water and you mix them together. Now, one of the great things about this non-Newtonian fluid is that you can lift it up and you'll notice how Amy's having a little bit of trouble there. If you add pressure to it, it acts like a solid. You can actually... Now, we're gonna try this and see if it works. But if you add the right tones, if you add, you know, some bass tones to it, you can make it dance. Now, it's not, unfortunately, we don't have a large enough speaker the size of the stage so everyone can see. So this is, we're going to try this at first, but then we're going we're gonna to bring this back up to the projector. Now, one of the great things about this non-Newtonian fluid, you could add food coloring if you want. You can make all sorts of different colors. One of the tricks that... What's up? Up, oh, we, need, we need special bow tie assistance. The other thing that you can do is, if you have a highlighter, you can take the tip out of a highlighter, and that highlighter solution, when it dissolves in water, if you take that and a black light, which you can buy for about $9.99, you can get that solution, or you can get that non-Newtonian fluid to glow. We got it going? What we're going to do is show you on the projector. Um, I think. We'll just need to keep it back far enough. Multiple things going on here. So, 
That looks like, it's a lot of fun. It's very messy. So what you can do is lift it up and simply add pressure. So you can turn it into small balls and you can see it sort of sticks to your hand. So this is a preview of what you can do at home. So this one I really suggest trying at home. And again, outside on a warm day where you can simply wash away the residue with a hose. Okay. So unfortunately, we won't be able to use the speaker, but um, that's non-Newtonian fluid. So thanks to Jenna and Amy for that. So while we're getting this set up, a couple of reminders. When we're finished here, please make your way out to the left, around the side of the building, and out towards the Brat Science Building, right up the stairs. Just follow the balloons and the signs and you'll be able to make your flubber. While you're up on that second floor, these students have created posters to sort of describe um, visually some of those experiments that we've done up here and some of them that didn't work out so well, unfortunately. Um, again, those flyers that, that I provided, if you didn't get one, please email me. My email addra address is also on the UW Sheboygan website. We hope you had a wonderful time tonight. I love doing this. I love science. And Hopefully my legacy is that some of these students, not only do they go on to great, great, have great careers, because I know that they will, some of them will be in science, and I really hope they take something away more than just what they learn in class, that they had a little bit of fun, they love science a little bit more. And I hope every one of you comes here. If you don't come here, you go somewhere else, but enjoy science in your own right. Science is fun, science is everywhere. We should all love science. Okay. Okay, so what we have here is dry ice. <laughs> so wait for my signal. Okay, so dry ice, the same dry ice that we had in that little bubble experiment, except we have it out on the bench top here. It turns out that magnesium can burn in an atmosphere of carbon dioxide. So we're going to light that magnesium. What's that? Okay. So as soon as the magnesium is lit, please turn down the lights. And I suggest not, trying not to look directly at this light. Because it'll get very bright white once it gets going. Go. So that magnesium, that magnesium can still burn even when it's in, right now it's in pure carbon dioxide atmosphere. So, I should stop looking at it myself. So, magnesium burns a very, very bright white. So, if you had magnesium chloride and fireworks, that's your white. So, what's going to be left is a very, very small ball of carbon. So, in our thermite experiment, we made iron metal here. My heart goes, you know, whenever we do one of these, it beats a little bit faster. So this will go for a few more experiments, but you can tell it's sort of dying out now that it's sort of just glowing. So most of the magnesium has now reacted. It was like a strobe light. Okay, can I have the lights back up, please? Okay, so you can see the reason why we saved this one for last, because we generated a little bit of smoke. Okay, so... We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for all the assistance to help us on stage. We are definitely going to put this on next year. So please be safe. Have a good night. I hope the rain has mostly stopped. <laughs>